what's up? Welcome everybody to Wizard Foods Development Stream, making the game song banger day 400 and something. Not really day 400 and something, it's more like day 500 and something. This is actually episode 400 or something. Just in case you're keeping score. Today I'm working on water depth and stuff, uh, doing some other stuff, you know? But, it, you know, Luke, I am your coconut water. Um, yeah, so this is, oh man, this is pretty damn, oh, this is Skippy, man. Skippy Doodah, hey, check us out. So, I figured, you know, I wanted to add some depth to the water. It's been on my list for quite a while. And, um, at first I threw on a sprite on top of all the water, and it worked. I'm like, okay, that's, that kind of looks good. Um, but it was kind of expensive, and then when I went off to different areas, it didn't really work, and then it didn't really work for, like, the depth of the water going from area to area, you know? Like, see how this depth here goes across these two, are two areas of wa the water is still deep. So, um, what's up, Boger Shud? Yeah, so I, um, I figured every single sprite is just a three-dimensional texture anyways. It has four different colors. So I subclass sprites in, in Cocos 2DX, you can only have one color per sprite, but actually what's going on underneath it is it has four colors per sprite based on the two triangles that you've got for each sprite and all the six corners and all that. So anyways, there's really four colors. So that's what's going on. I'm using, I'm subclassing a sprite and then using uh, gradients basically. So I'm changing the four colors of the sprite based on the depth of the water. And look it, it looks really nice. So proud of this. What's up, Kobarney? What's up, cosplays? So yeah, that's what I'm working on today. I'm still refining stuff. Just doing stuff and refining stuff. Another neat thing, if you haven't seen this, this is kinda cool. I mean I'll show you some of these. There's a lot more depth. That's really what I've been working on lately. Depth. I'm trying to make everything look deeper, feel deeper, feel more 3D. You know, this is a 2D game. I'm trying to fake three dimensions as much as possible. Actually, technically, underneath everything all, this, it really is a 3D game. All, everything has three dimensions for its coordinates and all that, but the visual part of it is just 2D, so I'm trying to fake that visual um, third dimension as much as possible, which is starting to happen right here in these dark woods areas. You've got lots of little pits right here. Here and there, this is a really good example. You know, it makes it feel like, whoa, this is a three-dimensional game, but it's not. It's pulling your chain. Okay, so, um, what I got scheduled for today is to work on the depth of this dungeon down here. I just changed this one dungeon. This is a psychedelic dungeon. This is where you get in. It's like a secret optional dungeon. And I'm working on the water depth here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is to make it really, really obvious that the water is super deep by changing the water depth. Did you just see a pink pouring? What's a pink pouring? Why are you doing such things as three coordinates? Um, because, well, it allows everything in the game to actually have three dimensions. So... Um, for example, there's some enemies that actually come up out of the ground, or there's some enemies that fly above your head. You know what I mean? Actually, let me show you an example. I'll take you to this one boss that is this entire boss fight. Parts of it are above your head, parts of it are below. Oh, pink slime? Pouring is a slime? Yeah, there was a pink slime there. Gotta have some contrast. Is the sound not working? Hold on a second. Sometimes I film videos and then all of a sudden it doesn't. Yeah, that was it. There we go. Okay, now we should have some sound effects. You do hard code? Uh, no, it's not hard coded. Everything's data driven. You mean you just code? 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyways, yeah, for things like this, check out this, this guy right here. He flies out of the ground and he flies up in the air. In the game, the mathematics are he's actually at a Z coordinate that's way above your head when he's up in the sky. And when he's below the ground, he's actually below Z zero. Same thing with these little burrowing guys right here. They go beneath the ground. So yeah, the mathematics are coded, so it's three dimensions, but the visuals are all 2D. So it's kind of a, kind of a balancing act. So I'm working on the depth of the water now, which is really cool that the that adding some depth to the water really added a lot of depth to the whole overworld and the, pretty much the whole game now. It's like, whoa, okay, cool. This looks really, really neat. Um, but check it out. There's one little problem so far. You can see that um, the water gets deep as you go down the screen here, but then when it gets to the edge of the screen, it gets back to like, it, it pretends like it's It thinks it's like it back at depth zero. So I'm trying to get it so when it, it goes black, 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 all and then really black at the edge of the screen. And it works for the overworld, but it doesn't work for these dungeons. So there must be some math in the tiles, the tile data. So it's not like quite getting to back to the deepest Z it can. Okay, so let's begin. First thing I'm gonna do is make it really obvious. So I've got this this one data, this piece of data controls the water depth. And if I set this really high, you'll see quickly, oh, oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, you can make hit checks, attacks, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 cosplays, exactly. You got it. You understand. Oh, wait a minute. Look at that. It is black. Is it? No, see, it's like, it's not quite black. Okay, that's just, I'm adding too much blackness. It's, it's concealing the fact that that's, it's not black at the very, very edge. Yeah, so you kind of got to get down here to the bottom of the screen to be able to see it. There's, it's definitely coming back into that purple color instead of being black right there. Same here. Okay, so it should be, let me check where it's actually doing the, the order which it's actually doing the, the depth in. Okay, so I had to do this earlier today. I basically am filling all empty areas. I'm filling up all the blocks with empty, the wall tile. So for this dungeon right here, the wall tile is the, um, the water. So I'm filling up every single blank area that's off the screen with water. And that should be allowing this set tile Z's function to accurately create some depth down there, but it's not. I wonder what's what this dungeon looks like at the for its map. Okay, so we're up at actually at Y position two and X position three. So this is three two let me confirm that. Oh, this is 4-2. Oh, there must be a secret area to the left. Yeah, there, I think there is a secret area to the left. Anyways, um, so it should have the water down there. I'm wondering why it's not... Let's, let's figure it out. Hmm... There's a function called set when it's setting depth or it's getting the depth. What's up, MC Finest? Hey, man. How you been? All 
Okay, I guess I gotta set another breakpoint in this function. Oh, oh, I got it. Oh, because it never goes, <laughs> it never actually sets the water depth. For this area you've been great cool I've been very great myself too it's been a really making a lot of progress here on Songbringer the game's getting pretty mature and I had a really great like September and August I, I got to go to Burning Man I took like the only vacation I took this year basically was one week at Burning Man and it was friggin life-changingly awesome it was just you know recharging all the creative juices and all that Sand dank memes? What's that? Oh. Oh. Uh, okay, so I get it. I get what's going on here. It's actually filling up the water depth for every for for this whole area, but it's not setting the water depth. Wait, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. No, yeah, no, it totally is. It totally is. It's not filling up the, the water depth for that area. Okay, so I could go and... I could go X is less than, I could go, yeah, like, I could make this loop go, well, let's try that. I'm going to go off the edge of the screen, basically, on each area. How's the pre-order going? Are you happy with the results? Yes, I totally am. It's going really well. Um... It's going really, really well. Yeah, I mean, the game was funded via um, via crowdfunding at first, and then and then alpha funding later with the pre-orders. So, I mean, I, I'm I'm so ecstatic. It's great to be able to make a game exactly how you want to make it and have people support your vision. You know, it's like what you people you people want to support this? Yes. All right, so I'm trying to go off of each one of these screens by one tile to see if setting the width or setting the depth for that works just like this, basically. Let's check if it does. Wild Chat, I saw your name the other day. I thought your name was so awesome. Have I ever done tutorials? Yes, I have. I wrote books for years on making games and at first, for a while, I was doing really well. I was making enough money to live uh, by creating game kits, basically. I would make games and do tutorials for them. And then I would sell the source code for the video games. And I made a living doing that. Um, and then uh, that only worked for like a year or two. And then everybody kind of started doing that. And it just became something that never I never really made money at it again. So awesome. Look at this. Look at this. It worked. So we have the full on, this is going all the way to depth, like the deepest depth it can. We're seeing that clear black edge on the edge of the screen here. This looks good. Wait a minute. Is it not quite? Yeah, it's not quite. Hold on a second. Let's go one less.
How many games do you have on Steam? Well, zero, technically. I have Songbringer that's going to be on Steam soon. It's it's on Steam technically right now, but it's not for sale on Steam yet. Um, the last game I wrote was for iOS. It was a MOBA. I wrote it with my buddy. We spent like uh, about two years making this this game. It was a kind of a zany cartoon character MOBA. It was real time multiplayer. It was incredibly difficult to code, and it just flopped. Super flop, so kind of was really disheartening, but it taught me a lot of good lessons about game development and how to do your own marketing. We didn't do any of our own marketing. We tried to hire a PR firm at the very end of it, and that just totally failed. So, yes, look at this. This is really nice to see this, this water depth. You see that? This really nice transition of water depth going between these two areas. This is super... This is really fulfilling to see this. And actually this level of water depth actually looks all right. Because this area has really, really dark water to begin with, it's nice to see the depth get like this. Once again, this is all about faking the third dimension, basically making it visually look like there is this is a three-dimensional game. Yeah, that worked really well. So basically all I did was just go off the edge of the screen to to set the water depths. So I think this area right here Wow, that's really, really bright right here. Hmm, I gotta fix that. I think, yeah, this is the secret path. Yeah. So usually there's a secret item right here. Awesome, yeah, that worked well. Okay, let's make sure that it's everything works looks really good on the overworld still. Should still look fine. The game would have crashed basically, or uh, you know, failed some kind of assertion if uh, if that hadn't worked. Basically, if going off the screen had changed anything significantly, it looks like it's fine. Here at the bottom of the screen, here it's still going to a nice depth. Let's make sure it's still working like over here. Yeah, good. It's going to a really, really nice dark color there. Still fine. Same here. Good, 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 good. What about these bridges? Yeah, these bridges could use some work. The very edge of their pixels doesn't really look right. Oh, okay, wait, but that doesn't... I was hoping it would look really deep going underneath these, but it doesn't because um, I think it's 
Oh yeah. It's the way it, it's the way it calculates the actual blackness for each tile. Are you just adding features to the game as they come, or do you have a plan? Oh, I have a plan, man. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have a plan. Sometimes I like to get to do both things, though. Um, like sometimes it's really nice to just ditch the plan and just add whatever I feel like doing that day. But but I definitely have a you know a list to do. A detailed plan for the completion of this game and everything. And it's mostly here in these Trello cards. So I have like 76 other bugs I gotta fix. These are not these are bugs and features and other little items to do. Like you know the one on my list right now is taller, deeper water. I'm about to cross this off pretty soon. And then you know 76 other little things. Some of these take a day. Some of these take five minutes. You know some. Most of these I'll probably have twice as many by the time I'm finished with them. You know, like it says about 200 cards right here right now uh, in the now and the later list. By the time I'm finished, there will definitely have been at least 300, if not 400 things actually got done. So, yeah, I like to be I like to have a detailed plan, but also to just completely ignore the plan sometimes. So this is good enough to check in. Basically just setting the water depths off the edges. All right, I do want to see if I can get that bridge to look better now. That was like about six, four or something. Here we go. Okay, so the thing that's going on is when it's measuring the depth of the water, I think it needs to use the depth of the current tile if it goes off of the water, basically. Let me show you what I mean. Create, oh, I was right on it. Create water tile. The way it creates the depth is it, it gets the depth of all the surrounding tiles and then it averages those depths. So, basically if I use the depth of the very middle tile, that current tile, if, there, if that tile is not water. I think that might make this look deep. Muteness. Yes, yeah, exactly. Depth does change. Oh, by oh, like if it, if the adjacent tile is like a certain kind of tile, like a mountain or whatever, it would be a different different kind of depth. That could be possible. It doesn't do that yet. There we go. That totally worked. So now, wait, but I hope I didn't break anything else. Basically, basically what's happening is that now it's deep. It's deep water going underneath this bridge. I'll fix the corner. You can see the corners of this bridge don't look that good. But let's just make sure it didn't break anything else by doing that. So far, this looks pretty good. Yeah, I think this is fine.
Yeah, good. Okay, that's a really good change. Basically, when it averages the colors or the depth of the water, if it gets to the edge and it's like, oh, here's the, um, basically it just works for bridges and nothing else. It uses the average color of, instead of using zero, it uses the, the depth of that current tile. Nice. That's good. Okay, so to make bridge tiles look a little bit better, Here's where it creates the bridge tile. And so it is creating just some some water, but it's not getting it's not using the water depth at all. What's up? Welcome Swami Cans and K Stress. Mutinous dude, that you just won 193 points, that's a lot. Papu's in a good mood today. So the way this bridge works is it draws a water, it draws a, a water tile, and then on top of it, it draws the bridge tile. The only problem is that the water tile isn't like, it doesn't have any depth. So I wonder if instead of trying to draw a water tile manually, like just adding an entity like that, if I would be better just to draw, like create a water tile underneath it. I hope this works, it'd be really cool. I don't know if the water depth will work though. Yeah, it might be depth zero and then it and then it still won't be the right color. That ah. Oh, that's right. It put on it put on everything a water tile would like the water. Everything about water is just wrong. So probably better to make the function for getting the water's depth uh, usable by this function down here. Man, this is something really annoying about Xcode 8. It indexes when you save your CPP file every time. Okay, create water tile.
Okay, so I need to basically, I need to make a functions or a function out of this where it where it sets the color depth and or this right here where it gets the depth of the surrounding tiles. The trick to getting the depth of the surrounding tiles is that I'm going to be setting the depth for a bridge tile. Oh, I guess what I could do is just set the depth for the bridge, set the exact same depth as the is the tile below it. Okay, this whole thing right here can become a function. Static void, we'll call this set color depth. Given an entity, use that entity sprite, and we want to know the tile type that we're looking for. And we also need a like a float depth factor per. Well, we also need the area. So this is a dot area pause. Oh, we need the the x and the y. And I guess we could just set the sprite. Oh, and this has to be a sprite blend. It's because that sprite sprite blend is subclassed from sprite to get that special setting of four colors. Coco Studio X does not do this by default. It doesn't it doesn't allow you to set four colors? But really, what's going on underneath the hood is it is setting four colors. So I basically just subclassed sprite and made a made a sprite that can set four different colors rather than just one. Okay, this is a dot area pause. This is tile. This is a dot area pause. This is sprite dot get color. This is depth factor per. And this is just sprite set color. Gonna verify that function compiles, and then I'll use it for creating the water tiles, and then I'll use it for creating the bridge tile.
Looks like it did compile fine. I'm just gonna let it finish indexing though. <laughs> Man, dude, this kind of sucks. I think I might actually switch back to Xcode 7. Like my computer is like, the fan is going, wait a minute, is it, is it a game show? Nope, it was Xcode. Xcode's making my fan run. I don't like it when my fan runs. All right, let's make sure the water depth still looks fine. Good. Okay, so we should be able to set the color depth for the bridge tile now. I'm going to try as much as possible not to hit the save. <laughs> this goes against all my instincts I've learned in my entire programming career. Don't save the file. No matter how much I want to, I'm not going to save. Because it's going to trigger the Xcode to index. Alright, so we're going to set color depth. Or render out sprite this area and I'm gonna start with just going y minus one even though I know this is gonna sometimes be y plus one or two and we're looking for k tile water and the de depth factor is same as water area water depth So we should see it if it if it works, then we'll see that the um, the bridge tiles that are on the bottom, the southmost bridge tiles, will look like they have the right color water underneath them. Yeah, it worked. Oh, it looks good. Nice. Oh, that's sick. This bridge looks really good on the bottom, but the bridge doesn't look good on the top. So that's the next thing. All right, so we just need to find like the nearest water tile and then use that position. Salad dogs, ahoy! Arr! I think there's a blocks find nearest function. I know, a single row? Yeah, yeah, that was one of those moments. It's like, whoa, I can't believe that just changing that looks that good. There's fine closest, but yeah, this is it actually. Oh wow, this loops over the entire area. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Pixel art. Ah, man, I love pixel art. I'm really, really glad I made a pixel art game and I'm still making it. Um, there were a lot of doubters and people are like, oh, pixel art's dead. 
Oh, pixel art sucks. Retro. There's too many. Re there's too many retro looking games on Steam already. This is a lot of the comments I got on when I was on Steam Greenlight. But fuck, I'm so glad I didn't listen to those people. You fond of it too? Yeah. See, there's people out there that they're fond of it. And the way I th the way I thought of it was like, you know what? If I'm fond of it, and I don't feel like I'm ever gonna not be fond of it. Like, there's something about that. Like, there's, I will never not like pixel art. I think it's just dope. I love, I almost, I almost instantly love other games because they are pixel art. Yeah, you like it too? Hanko <laughs> size doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, low poly 3D too. I love that. Nearest neighbor, yeah. I love it. Low poly is sick. I really love these lo these new low poly games coming out. Ogre Shed, you like it if it has a strong aesthetic. Yeah. I feel you on that. That's probably what made, like, even though it's a pixel art game, like, Sword and Sorcery had a really, really strong aesthetic. And I think that's what allowed it to cross over that boundary. Some people that weren't even into pixel art liked it. Because it had such a strong aesthetic. Thanks, Ogre Shed. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just start a loop and go up and down until I find a water tile. And then use that position. You'd like to do some 3D work that imitates the PS1? Cool. Uh-huh. Nice. Transistor, yeah. Or in the Blind Forest, Limbo. Yeah, they do all have very strong aesthetics. Wait, what's inside? Oh, is this um, from the makers of, uh, what's that other one? It's not from, these, are this, is this from the same developer that made Limbo, or is this a different one? Oh, yeah, it is, okay, the guys that made Limbo, yeah. Oh, this is pretty interesting. Oh, this was just released too. Wow. Recommend it? Nice. So this bridge can be like a max of like three tiles. So just go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah, I saw the Nintendo Switch reveal. Twitter was a buzz with it this morning. 
at first I got really excited. I was like, wow. And then I started reading other people's comments. I'm like, oh, it is kind of just like the other Wii U. It's like what Wii U should have been. But it actually looks pretty cool. I actually think I might buy it. <laughs> and I need a PS4 too. The things I need, man. I just need it. Gotta have it. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about the Nintendo Switch? Cosplay. Yeah, yeah, I stand. It's what the Wii U should have been, yeah. Yeah, I do too. I have a feeling it could be like one of Nintendo's biggest hits recently. As a game dev, I immediately wonder if it's going to have enough customers. Yeah, really? Yeah, you never know. I mean, the Wii U really bombed, right? And then, the, But the Wii was really good. I think it did really good in sales. I keep on not wanting to write this little loop right here because I feel like I did it already. Yeah. Well, for indie devs, definitely not. Yeah, but I think Wii was the Wii was pretty good for like actual console sales, right? See, look at this. The Nintendo's are always kicked ass with their portables. The DS had 154 million sales. Yeah. Are they are they even remotely favorable to indie devs yet? I feel like they should be, but I don't I've I haven't really seen any signs of that. But maybe they are. Maybe I just haven't really been paying attention. Yeah, it's true. MS and Sony. And now Sony, it, it feels like Sony's doing a really good job of it of, for indie devs. But then Microsoft did like kind of messed up a few things recently. Microsoft used to be doing the best, it seems like. So the NES had 60 million. The Super Nintendo had 50 million. 64 at 30 million. GameCube Cube 20 million. Wii U had 13. Is that bigger than the, that can't be bigger than the Wii. Where's the Wii? Oh, the Wii had 100 million. Yeah, the Wii kicked ass. The Wii did better than, than in, the, the original Nintendo. But the Wii U just kind of sucked. Well, comparatively. Yeah. Really? Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know Axiom Burge did that. I know, the, I know he was working pretty closely with Sony and all that when he was doing his development. Because it was out on the, the Sony news and all that. But I know he's actually funded by them. That's pretty cool. The Xbox One. I don't even notice. Wow, you're right. Xbox One and the Wii U. But I mean, it's only, well, sh shit, it's been out for like three years now, right? It should have some sales if it's gonna have any. Is 
This is surprising to me, though, that the Xbox only had 24 million. Nice, cool. You got set up with a PS Vita dev? That's awesome. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. We'll do each, for each quad here. For each. Yeah, quad's fine. And then int x equals, or x, x equals zero. Y, y equals zero. Add quadrant to x. And then multiply x, x times. I, same with y is y, and then now we can have just one piece of code. I was like, why, why can't we just have one piece of code? Oh, and then i is gonna need to be one to start with. All right, here we go. Y plus y y. What's up, Rocket Bunny? So if we have the water, then we set our depth based on that, and we'll break. I'm working on water depth. You'll see in a second. I almost got it to, to I almost got this so it can run. So it's kind of a janky way to do this, but I could just say this is north, east, or q equals three. And i equals three. So that it doesn't continue the loops anymore. All right, let's see if that worked. This is janky though, man. This bit is janky. It's bad. Bad, 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 bad. Oh wait, no, I could just say, yeah. Here, I got it, I got it, I got it. Constant max equals three. Max here. Don't do the quadrant thing here. This is I equals max and break. There, now it's not janky. Okay, so oh, this is this sucks because there's so much code right here just to find the nearest water tile. Boogie, what's up, man? We were just talking about the Nintendo Switch, and I wanted to mention your comment. Oh man, the bottom one didn't work. So I messed up, the top one worked. The top ones look great now, but now the bottom ones need to look great. Uh, 
Oh, it shouldn't be quadrant. Oh, that's why. Because quadrants go 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. That's the problem. No troll. Another really awesome name. For each dir. Dir. Dir, dir d add. Dir d to xxyy. There we go. There we go. Nice. Yes. The bridges look good now with this whole water depthy thing. That's awesome. Yay. All right, let's make sure that worked for other bridges. We'll look around the world looking for other bridges. We'll see if there's any trolls underneath them. Nug troll, is there any trolls around? Huh, Nug troll? Looking for trolls. Now this looks good. That looks really good there. I think there's a bridge. Oh, there's a bridge. That looks good too. Yay! We're patrolling patrols. <laughs> Sound dogs even killing it with these awesome puns. This is something I can fix the bridge here with the tiles. That would be really nice. Like not have any dirt right here. That would just make this whole bridge look so much better. And then also the end of this bridge would look a lot better if it didn't. Oh, oh, that's the top of a mountain tile. That's why it looks like that. Ow. Patrol, patrol. Yep, all this looks really good. Okay, we have, ah, yeah, man, this is so sweet. Water depth. It makes the whole world feel more 3D. Yay, check this in. Little touches, little touches make things better. So basically what I did with this last check-in was I, I took what the, the feature I made for making water look deep and I applied it to the underneath part of bridges. So the bridges look really nice on top of the water. Songbringer Troll Patrol. Troll Patrol would be an awesome name for a game. Somebody should make a game called Troll Patrol. Right? You instantly have the concept. I already I already have something in mind. Like an imagine I can imagine what that game would be like. Troll Patrol. Troll Patrol. Troll Patrol. Chompity chomp. Pachooey chewy chomp. Alright, Ogre should. See you, man. So that makes creating water tile a lot nicer. That functions nicer because it breaks the, the color depth part into a different function. You're starting a Kickstarter now. <laughs> I'd back it too. Like here, here's $10.
Sounds too much like a mobile game. <laughs> oh, we're on the same page there. I don't really like mobile da mobile games that much anymore. I, at first I did them all. Yay, mobile games. Wow, we can play mobile ga games on our phone? That's awesome. And then all of a sudden mobile games became like what they are. Yes, this is great. I love this water depth. Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna keep on working on. I'm really liking this whole process of um, getting through my my bug list actually lately. So I'm gonna cross this one off my list. But I'm gonna go over to that bridge that I just saw and fix that too, because that would be really nice to have this bridge all looking good. Let's go. Let's go over this bridge. Get the trolls out of this bridge. Right. They're easy to hate when with all the What's the okay wait, what's your what's the, what's the mobile game you hate the most? What's up, T? <laughs> All of them. All of them. Um, if I were to answer my own question, I think I hate games like Farmville the most, where it's like you like plant stuff. And then you just come back to your phone later and you check on it to see how well it grew. This sounds so boring to me. It's the same as the other... So there's another one that um, the guys, the, the people that made uh, Clash of Clans, they made one kind of like that. I hated it. Where you had some farm, you had to manage your farm. Okay, so this is a pretty simple situation right here. All I want to do is take this this dirt right here and get rid of it. Okay, so let me get to the code for creating bridges. You were playing with your nephew and you had to give up? Right? Hey. Hey. It's like in area patterns where it. Oh, it's when it adds rivers and lakes. So I think it's add lake. Yeah, this is where it determines the direction of like a possible bridge. This is where it's deciding on the bridge. Here's where it draws the water. Here's where I'm fixing bridge endings. What does this do exactly? It sets tiles to none. Oh, maybe this is breaking that bridge right there. Let us see. Oh, it's not. Okay, so maybe it's this right here. This bit right here where it's actually drawing the water? 
and it's saying, oh, if, if, unless this is an open path. Oh, okay. There was something I did a while back, like a long time ago. I did. I had some area which had some bridge. Man, I wish I could reference that area right now because it probably does not even have that bug anymore. Oh, it was this it was just this one area where I had to put in this open path thing. Okay, I'm just gonna do it this way. If if it's near the bridge then it's not going to care. Wait, yeah, that's supposed to be or. Okay. So basically, if it's an open path or, or if it's not an open path or if it's near the bridge. Yes, we have a clean looking bridge now. Woo! All right, it looks really good. Be nice if it, if the bottom of this bridge looked a little bit better though, if it didn't. Hmm, I could give it a little bit of more shadow real quick. Okay, I'll find the art for the bridge. Find the art for the bridge, that's the first step. I think it's in no shadow. No, it's not. Oh, it might be in overworld? Nope. Okay, I guess it's in shadow. It's not there either. Where's the bridge?
Nothing named Bridge? What the hell? Render component prefix. What the hell is the prefix? Overworld Bridge? Oh, it's called Overworld Bridge. I guess that makes sense. It is on the overworld. What I want is just a tiny bit more shadow. This is the end of the bridge, I guess. Yeah, that was the end of the bridge. Here's the beginning of the bridge. What's that? Is that what we need? It is. Okay. Wait, is it? What is this? This is a tricky one to edit. Sheets, no shadow, overworld bridge, zero, zero. Talking about that one. Ah, it is partially transparent here. Wait, is what? Oh, really? The shadows are like a separate sprite? Why did I do it this way? Anyways, I think if I just draw <laughs> Is it that one? No, that's the top of that there. So that's gotta be the top, and then this is the bottom. And I want it to just have more shadow. So if I do that, is that what it'll make it look better? Let's find out. The hardest part for you in C++ game dev is updating and rendering the objects in an efficient way that also makes collision detection easier. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, that did work. Nice if you couldn't step on this bottom too. <laughs> Don't use graphics. What's up, Rain? 
This game's called Songbringer. It's like Zelda 1, but it's procedurally generated. You, when you create a game, you, um, or when you create an adventure, you start your adventure, uh, you enter six letters, and those six letters give you an entire world. Yes, I'm game developing on a Mac. This is my preferred OS for development. So that didn't look good, that little part. Well, I can't make this all perfect. But at least it's a lot better than it used to be. Okay, so I could give it a little more, like, you know what I mean? If I gave it just a tiny bit of, like, collision area on the bottom here and the top here. It might be really good. Let's try it. Okay, we do not need this to be in the header anymore. What would the big dark floating orbs be? Caterpillars come out and you eat them whole? And your family? Oh, and they eat you whole? Yeah, what Boogie, what Boogie said. Boogie's, Boogie can see the future. He, he knows. Boogie knows all. <laughs> actually programming this game. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, all right. So I think I want this to be, I want to have a vertical flag in this. Did someone say boogie? Even better.
What is this video? <laughs> Today's rough. Why is today rough? Okay, so the H tile, the V tile is vertical. Oh, these are not this, this is just create bridge tile. You're in your first marking period of foundations of computer science. It looks so complicated. Tell you what, when you first start something like this, it does. It does look complicated. But eventually, it gets easier. Okay, so I just did all that so that I could go and quickly know whether the tile was vertical or not. School's boring. Ah, uh, you weren't taking notes. Oh, uh, what? You're already a grade ahead? Nice. Uh, what? Your school called your mom? They got you in trouble? So like, every time Xcode indexes, it uses 200% like of the CPU. That's why my computer is just going, it's going really hot. Xcode is just like, Xcode 8, is, I'm thinking about going back to Xcode 7. Are the worlds limited in size? Yes. Yep, every single one of the worlds is almost exactly the same size as Zelda 1's worlds. So the overworld is 16 by 8 areas. And then each one of the dungeons is limited to, you're like maybe 32 areas, 50 areas maybe. 
something like that. So in total, the world, the entire world has like around 500 screens, each of the worlds. Okay, so I wanted to just make I'm gonna make um, oh damn, I didn't even really need to do any of that. Webcraft in general it turns you into your computer into a grill. Dude, it used to it didn't used to do this. Xcode seven was fine. Xcode eight's like it's got other problems too. I don't know why they would make this called Xcode 8 either. It's not like they did enough to change it to make it Xcode 8. It should be like Xcode 7.2 or something. <laughs> so, the bridge V tile. Not below is frame three. Basically, if it's frame three, Yeah, or Xcode seven and a half, that would be a lot more reasonable. Okay, so I'm adding a, a collision component. to this, uh, to the bridge. So it's collision is category, mass, size, damage, flags. This category is gonna be, okay, filter, static. Mask, none, size, Height is like four. What was it? Size something something damage. Size damage flags. Damage zero, flag zero. Okay. All I want to see is a tiny little pixel buffer where you can't walk on the edge of the bridge. It's just a tiny little refinement. Should make a difference to the overall feeling of the game though. You can't just walk on the edge of the bridge. That'd be nonsensical. Did it work? It didn't work. Damn. Why? Did it get there? Show or did. What entity is this? X zero, Y three. Yeah, all those were the appropriate lice, the right places for all that.
Kind of confused. That should have worked. Let me take this breakpoint off. I made it. I made it a little bigger this time. Maybe that helps. Uh, still nothing. And really, it should be like three pixels tall. That's it. Yeah, did it go outside the bridge maybe in the water, right? Yes, that's a possibility. I think the easiest way to check that is to go to the water tile and just turn them all off. So you can see just the, um, yeah, this should reveal what's going on. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. It needs a position component. Yeah. So every collision component needs a position component. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We can turn the water back on. I'm sure this is it. So yeah, we're going to need an entity. Add component. New position component. I think it's just pause. Yeah, pause. Times equals k pixel new. New. That's some old school code. Didn't need that. All right, there. Pause. Pause. There we go, cool, it's working. So eight pixels is obviously too tall. Let's make it just three. Three pixels, that's it. Yeah, that's basically it. Just one little touch, make the bridge feel a little bit better. Yeah, nice. You can't walk on the edge anymore. Let's even make it four pixels. Feeling crazy. Let's make it four pixels. All right, little touches. Little touches to make the overworld feel better. It's kind of been the theme of this month. It's like, what can I do to make the overworld feel better, look better, more fun, you know, more, more stuff like interest points, more NPCs, little things like this, little touches to the water. I wish I could fix this right here where there's a tiny little bit of water there, but I don't want to get too much more detailed into this right now. If I get, I'm just going to get sucked down the rabbit hole if I focus too much on the, on the details. So far, this is a really, really good changes today. I'm really happy with all this. That's a nice little touch right there, not being able to walk off the edge of that bridge. The top is still fine. You can't really walk too high. The bridges look a lot better. The depth of the water is like is going underneath here. That looks great. Does it smell better? What can we do to make this game smell better? Hmm. Well, the first thing we can do is to stop Xcode from using so much of the CPU because, man, this room smells like dust. Not really. I'm just making stuff up. Let's check this in. Check it in, man. Check it in. Add strawberry jam. Makes everything smell better. So much more appetizing. Uh... 
Okay. So I'm going to save this and um, yeah. What will he do next? What will be the next thing? Dust Devils? Dust Devils! There are some Dust Devils so far. They're little dusty, dusty things when you like run around and you turn real fast. Dust Devils! Dustiness! If you just sit here, you can like dance. This is the dance right here. Dance in, yeah. D -d 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 Dance in. Oh, get down. T -t 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 Ow, yeah. T -t 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 Ow, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so what else is gonna do tonight? I don't know. The tornado in Super Mario Three. Add that. I forget what that guy looked like, but as soon as I see him, I'm gonna remember. Not that I'm actually going to make this guy, but he's basically made of circles. <laughs> oh, I can't find him. He's in the desert level with the sun. Yeah. This one. Ah, Super Mario Bros. 3. What a classic. What a classic. Oh, oh, I know what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to go get on. We're working on my Trello list. I think I'll probably get on to these next things. Making the screen, screen, I can't even talk today. Screen glow red. Screen glow red. Screen glow red. Screen glow, screen glow red. Screen glow red. That's really hard to say. Ten times fast. Yeah, I'm going to make the screen glow. <laughs> the screen <gl> <laughs> Yeah, so right now when you get when you get um, hurt, there's all these little red things on the edges of the screen, but now that I'm really low on health, I want the screen to glow a little bit on the edges. That's just a tiny little touch. To, so, so something visual. Right now, if you have your sound off, you can't really tell you're low on health. Oh, it was basically made in circles. That kind of would be a cool enemy slash thing. Are vectors more efficient than arrays? Usually not, no. Plain old C arrays, C++ array, just a plain old C array basically is going to be almost always be faster than a vector. I can't really think of any situations when they wouldn't. So if you get hit by a tornado, you everything turns black and white. <laughs> like 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 Wizard of Oz black and white. All right, so yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's stream. I'm just going to um take a break now. Made some really good progress this morning. All this all this stuff with the water depth is just makes everything feel so good. Look at that. Look how good that looks with that water depth. So when I come back to, um, tonight to to work, I'm just gonna let I'm just gonna let my heart flow, man. I'm gonna see whatever the hell I want to work on and just do that. Um, I probably should get starting working on some bugs though. 
because I'm going to put out another update on Steam tomorrow probably, so I do got to get some bugs fixed before this next release comes out. This is actually a pretty big release. There's a lot of a lot of major changes, so I really do got to do a playthrough. Maybe I'll do a playthrough on tomorrow's stream. I don't know. But yep, that's going to be it for today's stream, everybody. You tested your new ship? Sweet. Nice. Melting enemy ships within seconds. Right on. Enko, you almost got enough points for a, a copy of the game. Trying out alternative health indicators? Like a transparent heart beating? That's a good suggestion. I'll take that in mind. Think about it. Later, suckers. <laughs> An outline in the center. Oh, that's interesting. Right, like if you're if you're low on health. I got you, mutinous. I think I think I see what you're saying there. I'll think about that. Play around with it. So once again, thanks everybody. Catch y'all next time. Yeah, the theme totally. <laughs>